Hi, welcome to Psychology 12 or Lifespan Psychology. My name is Dr. John Rice and I'll be your instructor this semester. In this course, we're going to cover a variety of topics that talk about the development of humans, both using examples from humans and from non-human animals, from birth all the way through death. In this course, we'll give you a general introduction to how babies are born, what teratogens, or chemicals, or other environmental factors harm or help those babies early in life, You've probably all heard, right, we should play babies' classical music because it makes them smarter, especially if you do it while they're still a fetus. We'll hopefully try to debunk some of that so that you're not spending hundreds or thousands of dollars at Babies R Us trying to make your baby better, smarter, faster, stronger, or whatever other kinds of things parents often do um, that maybe psychological research doesn't support. And we'll kind of continue that throughout the course. So we'll talk about what things help children, We'll talk about how in some ways homework um, in young children can actually be harmful because it decreases motivation, for example. I know some of you right now are like, homework is terrible, we don't need to do it anymore. And I said in young children. So unless you're six or seven, I'm not talking about you. In addition though, we'll talk about young relationships, both friendships and eventually developing romantic relationships. We'll talk about sexual orientation and the process of coming out, gender identity and how do young children or, Adults learn to identify their gender. Sometimes we sort of take that for granted, right? You just sort of assume, well, you just know, right? Which is true if you sort of fit within the norm of society, right? Because everyone around you looks like you, acts like you, talks about things and thinks about things in the same way as you. But actually, hopefully we'll give you some examples where, no, if you don't fit with a societal norm, then you don't just know what your gender identity or what your sexual orientation actually is. So we'll talk about how do young adults learn to identify their goals and their identity? How do they identify their job or career goals that they have? Uh, how do they learn to form relationships, right? And again, we often take that for granted. We assume you just sort of pick it up on your own or you pick it up from friends. Think about all the bad things you learned from friends before though. Like maybe friends are not the best way to learn about the world, at least not always, right? Um, but then we'll talk about like how do aging adults change their priorities. One of the things we often see is that uh, young adults are often highly motivated by work and work success. But as they start moving into their 40s and as they start having children or their children are getting older, they start to refocus on other things they want. And then we'll talk about how do adults start to make that transition into their um, either into second careers, going back to school. Um, how do they decide whether they want to go back to school and what their career goals are? with going back to school? And then how do they decide upon retirement? What do they want out of retirement? We often sort of think still these days, right? Like 40s over the hill and it's, it's halfway to the end of your life, right? And um, there's not much left, but I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that I'll convince you that in fact, 40 is often some of the best years of your life for a variety of reasons, both financial and social um, for a number of reasons. And that often many older adults have very successful, very happy lives. In fact, actually, interestingly enough, um, the happiest adults tend to be adults who do not have children um, and who are single. So we'll talk about that later, hopefully. Um, and if I forget to talk about it, make sure that you ask me about it because it is kind of fascinating. We'll talk about why that might be. Anyways, we'll then end by talking about end of life um, and how do people make that adjustment? How do you decide on end of life decisions? Things we often, especially in many cultures, it's not okay to talk about. You know, how do you decide? How do you tell someone that they're dying? Um, in some cultures, actually, they won't even tell a family member. So family members will keep it from them. And some of you know that, right? Because you're from a culture like um, many Latin American cultures. It is not okay to tell a family member they're going to die. You would save that information to protect them. Um, whereas in U.S. culture, that tends to be that tends to go against what we think is, is ethical or right. Um, and in fact, many nursings, uh, nursing staff or nurses often deal with that problem, right? I mean, how are you sensitive to the wishes of the family based on their culture, but also respectful of the patient who you might be caring for? And I'm sure that there are a number of you that are interested in allied health or maybe working in nursing facilities or maybe you're interested in doing that in the long term. So these may be things that you actually come across in your day-to-day -day career or job. Anyways, um, so that'll kind of be the structure of the course. Um, so let's take a few minutes and let's actually look at how that's going to be accomplished. So how are grades determined, how you look at the syllabus, all those kinds of items, okay? So to access all the materials in this course, you're going to need to go 
to the Blackboard page by starting at the Las Posillas College homepage. Once you're there, click on the Blackboard link. Then you'll be asked to put in your username and your password. Your username, unlike what's shown on the screen, is always going to be your WID number. If you don't know what your WID number is, you can find that in class web. Um, then your password, and that's described right here on the bottom of the screen, your password is always starts out as being the first two letters of your first name, followed by the first two letters of your last name, followed by the last four digits of your WID number. Okay? If you've already logged into Blackboard before though, you might have changed your password, so it'll be whatever you changed it to last time. Click that login button. This is going to take you to a list of all of your courses and any announcements those courses may have. So you'll see here, Psych 12. Now, this may not be the exact same course um, because I reuse these videos over multiple semesters. Um, so just make sure you're looking for the Psych 12 course. Then what you're going to see is here on the left side of the screen, a list of all the course materials you're going to use and then a set of announcements. So this, you'll always start on the announcements page. This will tell you first you need to read the syllabus and complete all the unit one assignments and it will even give you the due date. And you'll see these actually throughout the semester reminding you when you need to work on items. In addition, it also talks about the textbook. So the textbook includes an access code that you're going to need to do the online homeworks. So please make sure that you buy a textbook that either has the access code or, as I'll talk about in just a minute, you can use a link on this Blackboard page to buy an electronic textbook which includes your access code for the homework. I am the advisor for the uh, Queer Straight Alliance, which is a meeting place for students that are interested or supportive of LGBT members of society but you don't have to be lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, intersex, or pansexual to join us. We are welcoming to anyone. We meet every Wednesday from 3.30 to 4.30 in room 1643. That's in the Student Life um, buildings so or right near the cafeteria and admissions and records. In addition, we have a psychology club that meets every Thursday at 3.30 um, from, uh, in room 1602, so you can find that. And there's a variety of other announcements that you'll find on here. Okay, so check back regularly to see what's up there. You'll also see my information, including things like office hours, um, where my office is located, and other relevant information. Then you'll also see a syllabus, which is critical that you review, which will include a description of the course. Right, We recommend that you're eligible for English 1A, even if you haven't taken it yet. In addition, we also want to make sure that you have bought the correct textbook, so double check that you have that one, that it includes an access code. If you bought or you're using a used textbook, you, that's totally okay. You just need to make sure that you buy the electronic access code. Lastly, it'll have the four student learning outcomes. These are the four things I expect you to know by the end of the course. These are the big picture items I expect you to walk away from this course. Major theories, major concepts, um, what are the major research findings in, in lifespan psychology? And then um, how do we understand uh, developmental change? How do we understand how children develop over time and become adults? How do we successfully age, for example? And we'll develop assignments and work on assignments that help to reinforce these outcomes. In addition, you'll see a variety of other things, including all the course policies, my expectations about you, um, any student support, so if you need college orientation, if you've never been to Las Positas College before, we have online counseling services and tutorial services, technical requirements to access the course, and then lastly, and most importantly, I'm sure for many of you, the course schedule. So this includes how points are determined, there are eight different units, um, again, there is a late policy, so I do not accept items that are late, but everything is structured so that you know when things are due. I will not pop up new assignments that are not listed on here. So the first set of assignments, which is in Unit 1, is just an introduction to online courses. It's pretty quick. It only consists of two assignments that are worth 30 points. It's due on Tuesday. You have just less than a week to work on it. It's due at 5 p.m. After that, every unit will be due on a Thursday, starting on September 1st, and then approximately every two weeks after that, always at 5 p.m. You'll see the readings in the book that you need to be following and how many points each of those is worth. Okay, And then lastly, we have an interview project where you're going to choose to interview someone who is 45 years or older. Could be a parent, maybe a grandparent. Grandparents are sometimes easier. As it gets closer to the end of the course, I'll talk about this and why they might be easier. That's your final project. There's no actual final exam in here, um, but there are these um, unit quizzes or unit exams um, in each of these first eight units. Okay. 
So a couple other things. You can contact me by email. Um, you can always keep track of your grades. If there's something not showing up, please feel free to email me. And then in this course materials folder, you'll um, if you want to buy the electronic textbook, so that includes an ebook and it gives you access to all the homework that you need, um, you can use this access to textbook link. Um, if you have any problems accessing course material, the Cengage technical support will be the best place to go if it's related to the textbook or the homework assignments. If it's anything related to Blackboard, please email me and I'll see what I can do to help. You'll find all of your assignments here and all the reading assignments here in this folder. Okay, So when you first click on this access to textbook link, you should have a new window that pops up that brings you to the Cengage Learning website. This is loading pretty well. So you'll see a picture of the textbook. Hit the enter button. Um, so normally what it'll, it'll ask you initially if either you want to use the trial period. So there's a two week window where you do not need to buy the textbook. So if you're waiting on financial aid or you're waiting to get paid to buy the textbook, that's totally okay. You have a two week grace period. After that though, you need to make sure that you buy the textbook. Either because you've used the um, window here to buy an online textbook, which is usually a little bit cheaper than the physical textbook, or you've bought a physical textbook that includes an access code at the bookstore. Okay, remember, you need the access code to be able to complete the homework assignments. They are worth a significant portion of your grade. Okay, so again, you'll see all the chapters in the book that we're going to cover, 1 through 16. We'll do anywhere from 2 to maybe 3 chapters a week, depending on what unit we're talking about. But you'll actually be able to access, um, sorry, so if you click on that um, access to textbook link and nothing happens, that's because your pop-up blockers are probably enabled. So you're going to need to follow this link to get a tutorial about how to change your pop-up blocker settings. Um, that should fix that problem. If you have any other problems accessing the textbook, please use this Engage technical support link. Then what you'll find in these units, so in the first unit, again, it's due on Tuesday. It's pretty quick. What you'll see is it's just talking about how do you use an online course. If you've ever taken an online course, this will be really important. Online courses really require that you be very organized about how you complete assignments. You need to set reminders in your phone or on your schedule about, oh yeah, Thursday at 5 or Tuesday at 5, these assignments are due. Or you could even do them ahead of time, which is even better. Okay, so you'll see all of your graded assignments are in a graded assignment folder with the due date, in case you forget. You'll see in this first unit, there's only two of them, a getting to know you discussion board assignment. So you'll just go to the discussion board over here on the left, post some information about yourself. The more the better, right? I don't get to see you, so I'm really trying to learn something about you. Makes it easier. And again, if you see me on campus, please walk up and say hi and introduce yourself and tell me that you're in my online lifespan course. There's also an online orientation test, which really just determines whether or not you've read the syllabus. Okay, again, pretty straightforward. You'll also see that the Unit 2 set of assignments are already up. So if you click on this link, again, you've got a few weeks to work on these, but what you'll see is a link to the reading in the uh, textbook, and then you'll see the graded assignments. And in here what you'll see is the Unit 2 exam, a, a preschool advertising assignment, a discussion board assignment, and then there are these homework assignments from the book that are these video quizzes. Okay, so you've got lots of assignments to work on in those first two weeks. Keep you busy. I don't want to get make sure I want to make sure you don't get bored. Again, every unit has a discussion board assignment, so you can see some of these already, and you can see that some people have already started posting, so that means you might be behind the ball. Anyways, welcome to Lifespan Psychology. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, if it's over a weekend, I might be a little bit more delayed, but I try to get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. If I haven't responded to you, it may just be that I missed your email. So please do not hesitate to send me a second, hey, Dr. Rise, wake up, answer my email. Um, you will not bug me at all. I hope to have a great semester with you. Bye.